Welcome everyone to the Kineticon 2022 recap video. I'm here with Lobo and we've been here at the convention together for the past few days uh, since Thursday and yeah. we've pretty much finished up the convention. This is yeah. Sunday afternoon, a little bit after the convention closed and so we just kind of wanted to provide a recap on everything that happened. We're, we're not going to go into necessarily every detail, but if you have further questions, feel free to just leave a comment below. All right, cool. Yeah. So uh, do we want to talk about Thursday or just jump straight to Friday? Uh, well, question? technically you arrived here Wednesday. I arrived here Wednesday, yes. So, yeah. I, I toured the city a little bit uh, while uh, waiting for, no, actually, I didn't, no, I didn't really tour the city at all. I, <laughs> I just, uh, I showed up to the hotel room and I made a, a TikTok, I did a TikTok live stream. I made myself some green tea with the Keurig for the first time and did a little bit of a, a room tour, but uh, yeah. not much more than that. And then, uh, yeah, went to bed and then I, uh, then, then I was on my way yeah. to you were on your way yeah. on Thursday. Thursday was when I did a little bit more touring of the city. Uh, I got my badge. At, I, I was waiting in line at the time that uh, badges were open for collection. Yeah. And uh, Lobo got his shortly after showing up. Um, yeah, there, there was this cool place. It's like a movie theater and a restaurant. I killed a little bit of time there and I watched uh, uh, Thor Love and Thunder and that was uh, pretty fun. Yeah. Not necessarily a great movie, but uh, it was a good way to kill time and I much rather would have watched that movie than watched the oh, new Minions, Minions movie. <laughs> yeah, Minions. it was that or Minions. Like, <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take Thor, please. <laughs> I'm not in a Minions mood, that's for yeah. sure. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, it was a cool place. It was probably like the highlight out of uh, all the places that I've been to. Yeah. Lobo hasn't been there yet, but I would highly encourage you to check it out. It's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So technically, I know uh, Wednesday was technically day negative one. Yeah, day negative one. We're going by that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Thursday, we're considering day zero. Yeah. And so if we had a day before that, it's got to be day <laughs> negative one. Like, what else? What else yeah. we got, you know? <laughs> but yeah, like uh, that, that was uh, pretty much day zero in a nutshell. I uh, chatted with a, a couple of people and, and uh, in line. In line, yeah. Uh, and uh, we talked about One Piece a little bit. It was pretty cool. Uh, right, yeah. One of them was caught up on the manga and the other was like halfway through. Uh, and then I found them later in their cosplays and took a picture with them and everything. Uh, posted it on Twitter. It was. Uh, yeah. It was a good time getting to meet them, talk talk with them, and see them again. Uh, especially since Lobo wasn't here, I kind of had to just find people to chat it up with a little bit. Yeah, now uh, in, in line, you took how long were you waiting in line? I want to. I I wasn't paying attention, but I want to say I waited maybe like an hour and a half. Although yeah. I got there like half an hour before uh, it opened, so. There was a pretty lengthy line to get the badge pickup. Yeah, uh, a lot of people showed up early, and I, I myself showed up half an hour early, and then it took another hour or so to get my badge. And then for you, I uh, just walked in and got the badge, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the line was barely a line at all. Yeah, <laughs> it was much shorter. Lobo was able to yeah, get here. through there very quickly. I got here like around like almost seven. Seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. say that's about right. Yeah. I would have gotten it early, but I had some issues with the plane. Yeah. And then after that, we went to the Mexican place. I actually went there for lunch on uh, on Thursday and then went back there for dinner <laughs> again. Uh, yeah. But like a later dinner because uh, I went to like the movie theater place for dinner. I slept through breakfast on Thursday. Oh, so Still had three meals, but it was like lunch, dinner, late dinner. I guess early dinner, late dinner. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, yeah, uh, the and Mexican food place was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, we actually walked in oh, uh, yeah, just yeah. as they were closing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, we yeah, like, that, yeah, like we took, we took our, they took our orders at like 7.59 and the place closed at 8. But most places don't close at 8. <laughs> We're not used to that. Uh, yeah. So uh, that kind of caught us off guard a bit. Oh, you're, you're only open until 8. Okay. That's a little bit of a shocker. We're so used to we're. If anything, we're kind of spoiled that most restaurants will stay open until like 10 o'clock. At least 10. Mm-hmm. 9, 10. Yeah, usually. Um, but yeah, that was definitely an exception for sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, kind of a cool atmosphere though, getting to like eat as they were like closing shop. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of cool and it was nice and quiet. So it gave us a chance to sit down, relax, enjoy our food and uh, talk about uh, uh, what we wanted to do. Yeah, what, kind of talk about what we wanted to do and uh, catching up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It, it was a long time since we were at our last conventions. Mine was 2019, yours was 2018. Yeah, yours was uh, uh, a talk right? A talk I believe, was the last one. Yeah, yeah. I'll say mine was Montreal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, for both of us, it was uh, it was a long time. And <laughs> a long time coming in. Uh, definitely overdue, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. later that night we played a Switch. We did, yeah. we did. We, we hooked up the Nintendo Switch, which is right there, and we played ourselves some Smash Brothers. Yeah. It was pretty great. Uh, although, uh, had a bit of trouble connecting the Switch Wi-Fi uh, to the hotel Wi-Fi. Uh, didn't quite work out as we hoped. Uh, yeah. There, there's like an issue with like the browser on the switch uh, being able to like access the the security browser to yeah. access the hotel Wi-Fi. Yeah, pretty much also that um, if you play the switch like with no internet, you're not gonna play with the DLC. Yeah, yeah, you pretty much need like uh, internet access in order to run the DLC for Smash Brothers. I guess that could be uh, we could like. Uh, that's a little lesson learned for next time. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, yeah. Uh, we did launch the, the Smash with the DLC, but we had to use tethering from our phones and uh, run our data as a, uh, as a Wi-Fi hotspot, basically. Yeah. And that worked perfectly fine. And it only took up, like, I want to say a megabyte and a half of data. So it was well worth it. <laughs> Yeah. It didn't take up, it hardly took up any data at all to get that going. Um, but yeah, a little, little bit of tech knowledge helped us out. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, and then there's Friday. 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 I'm getting my days mixed up. I'm very tired. I did not sleep well during this convention oh, at well, all. Mostly this night. Well, no, no. Like the past, the past three, like... The past three nights. Um, so okay. l- last night I slept for five hours. The night before I slept for six, mm-hmm. and then the night before that I slept for five again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I am. I am a little. I'm. I'm a little out of it right now. <laughs> but uh, Friday, yeah. Oh, you know what? I should pull up the the con schedule. Uh, yeah, the first thing that we did on Friday was we went to the vendor hall. We got a lot of cool art, a lot of cool art, and <laughs> heard our wallets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we spent that cash, baby. <laughs> uh, we spent loads of money. <laughs> well, I'll say it's worth it, though. It was, uh, yeah, yeah. Although, mm, mm, it's going to be painful to look at later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But it was, it was certainly worth it. Oh. Just, we got some great artwork for sure. And uh, we also uh, got autographs. Yeah, that day, yeah. Yeah, uh, so you really wanted to see Jill Harris in particular. Yes, I want to see her. And, um, because uh, she was the voice of uh, Noelle from uh, Black Clover. Um, that was one of the main, my favorites. And um, she also voiced uh, Rika. Okay. Um, I believe she also voiced um, y- Yumi from mm-hmm. the, uh, it's a sequel to Gridman. Okay. Dinah Dyna and Zenon. Um, and then um, she also voiced uh, Charlie from Hazard Hotel. Yeah, that uh, pretty much like I only knew her as Charlie and uh, one of the uh, the cat superheroes from My Hero, My Hero Academia. Yeah, and that was that was pretty much it. That's 
that's all I remember of her. Uh, and but then, yeah, but know. but I I watched Hasman Hotel, so I knew her as Charlie, and yeah, you know, like that was still pretty exciting. And yeah, honestly, yeah. that was actually uh, when I it was actually surprising when I first heard mm-hmm. that she was the same voice as uh, Noel. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that she was like part of it. And another voice actor I met the English voice for uh, Comey. Mm-hmm. I met uh, an individual that voiced, I would argue, the most cruel and evil character in all of anime. Uh, Chuck Huber, he voiced uh, the father of the little girl in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. If you know, you know. And uh, we got a, oh, I got a good clip of that. Oh yeah, uh, it was before. Oh, it was, it was. It was when I found out, and I was like talking about it, and I was getting like all like emotional over it. Yeah. And then that someone was before, that, that was before. Oh, we were waiting for the the guests the guests to arrive. Yeah. 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 And uh, some people actually came up behind us, and they showed us the the cool art of the transition between them and the link between the girl and the dog. Yeah, it should be in my video. Ah. Uh, yeah. We did oh. go back to the vendor hall for a bit. Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, Amber Amber Lee Connors, the voice of Comey. Oh yeah, yeah, Amber yeah. Amber Lee Connors. Yeah. This was the day that neither of us showed up in cosplay. We were just there as ourselves. Yeah, we wanted to explore and mm-hmm. see what's around. It was definitely an exploration day. It was a day for adventure, not for showing off. There was also uh, a f- food truck rally that happened like outside of the building, uh, so that was. Uh, really cool and so oh, yeah that was like, nice to see we got some good food there it was uh pretty great uh that was friday yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah friday oh, yeah okay. yeah we got some poutine yeah <laughs> yeah yeah canadian food in america we got it too we got poutine available they even had like the canadian leaf on the logo of that food truck i know we also uh, we saw the cosplay championship yeah. wrestling okay yeah that was after we yeah yeah so the the cosplay wrestling was really cool they had like this arena in uh one of the larger halls uh where where the the, next to the the, yeah the retro gaming yeah so one side was like the vendor area and then the other side was a combination of retro gaming autographs and then the wrestling and then the wrestling arena and so uh we got to sit down and watch a bunch of cool matchups uh between uh contenders uh in particular uh my favorite was probably the drunk thor i love oh, that one yeah that's nice. yeah yeah thor just showed up and he was very overweight and yeah and he was completely drunk like although actually the phrase was i'm not drunk i'm hung over <laughs> so that was that was excellent. Yeah. Oh, that that was a wonderful moment. Yeah, I know you filmed most of it. Yeah, so I real, real I filmed video. like almost all of it. Yeah. Uh, and I shot them in like individual videos. I might just edit it in the highlights. I'm not totally sure how I'm gonna do that. I haven't planned it out totally. Yeah. So I might not show the full fight, especially because they might have like a better uh, video available officially oh. of uh, the full fight. Um, so yeah, I might just show highlights of it. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Yeah, I only filmed the, the last part, or like the last fight. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and any clips of it, uh, any other videos that we post uh, should be in the description of this video. Yeah, that, that one's gonna be like the one, the big one. Yeah. I mean. Did you want to talk a little bit about the the video game launch and what they had over there? Uh, I mean, yeah, we could talk about it, but it's pretty much like about, you know, yeah. what, it, what do you expect? It you know? was very similar to Montreal. what we had at the other conventions, like at Montreal, yeah, yeah. where it was uh, a bunch of uh, CRT stations and a few uh, HDTV stations as well. Yeah, uh, It was a mix of retro gaming and modern gaming. Mm-hmm. So you had a bunch of the old consoles and then you had a bunch of the... The modern, the modern yeah. newer consoles. Uh, yeah, uh, they had the PS5. They had the PS5. They had the Xbox Series S mm-hmm. there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got a mix of old games and new games. A bunch of Nintendo Switches, 
like there was an entire role dedicated to Smash Brothers Ultimate, probably for the oh, tournament yeah. that they had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they had a Smash Brothers tournament, and uh, they had uh, some other other games too. Um, yeah. That table. I think I thought I saw Mario Kart. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. Which we 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 did end up playing Mario Kart sixty four not on Friday but yeah, yeah that was that was one of the many games that we played yeah that was Saturday and uh, we saw a bunch of cool cosplays too like that was kind of our day where at least for me uh, I asked uh, like a bunch of cosplayers if I could take pictures with them uh, so we took a bunch of uh, photos of that and that was uh, a pretty great time too. Uh, can't think of many off of the top of my head, but I remember like seeing Usopp from One Piece. I got oh, very yeah. excited over him. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Any particular cosplays that stood out? To- oh yeah, Beppo. Beppo was there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, Beppo, my man, Beppo, the best character in all of One Piece. He's a legend, <laughs> and he was uh, there with the Law cosplayer, who uh, happens to be the captain of Beppo's crew, and. I got like overtly excited for Beppo to the point where I was basically ignoring Law. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and Law is pretty cool too. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, there was so much yeah. disrespect and um, shade. I've got the uh, hentai. We saw that one. Yes, yes. Yeah. In the vendor hall, there was a, there was a hentai mm. uh, yeah. booth. And uh, that was something else. Yeah. We can't <laughs> talk about it though. We do not talk about this. The sign was really cool. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in the hentai room stays in the hentai room. I'm sorry, but it's going to have to remain a mystery. You're going to have to attend the convention for yourself and be 18 plus. Because, yeah, yeah, we we can't go into too much detail on uh, any of the 18 plus stuff. But it was a good time. It was it was fun to some extent. We found and located the subway oh, yeah. Yeah, on yeah. Friday. Yeah. And I'm not talking the metro, I'm talking subway sandwiches. Our tradition, we kept it alive. We didn't yeah. eat there on Friday because we, we had some of the food truck food. But oh, yeah. but yeah, like yeah. we like our mission was nearly complete. Yeah. We just had to attend and eat subway. We didn't know that it was a subway though. We had no idea. We had no idea until we actually found our walk path from the hotel to the convention. Oh yeah, yeah, because we kept taking the Uber. We kept Uber. taking Ubers at first because mm-hmm. we didn't see a clear path. We just saw yeah. like large roads. Yeah, we thought it was just But the then road. like off to the side across the parking lot there was a walkway. Yeah, under the and bridge. The, yeah, we got we got directions to yeah. uh, be able to walk to the convention. So that saved us a good amount of money. Um, and also, uh, there was the side quest guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That guy was pretty cool. We ran into him before the convention even opened. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the side quest guy, uh, he held up a sign that said free side quests, and he had, like, this pouch with a bunch of, uh, index cards, and he wrote down, uh, different side quests, uh, for people to do. And I asked for a random one, and it was a very simple one. It was just take a selfie by the river. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like we did that right away and then turned it in uh, shortly after the convention opened. I'm just, I'm just looking through the gallery a little bit more. I did I did also buy this cool one piece shirt. I don't know how well you can see it from here. I might have to might have to get a little bit closer. But uh, yeah, it features uh, the crew by the point of the time skip you got luffy here and then you got the other crew members of the straw hat pirates at least at the point of the time skip and oh, that was yeah. uh that was really cool to to find actually like i didn't find any one i did find one piece of one piece art no <laughs> no pun intended but i yeah, I found one piece of One Piece art that I actually, uh, that did speak to me, uh, yeah. uh, but it was sold out. So, because there was only one copy available and someone else bought it. So I ended up uh, compromising and getting a different piece of art. So the only thing One Piece related that I got from the vendor hall is this shirt, but I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty rad. Yeah. 
you know, the camera roll is actually great for our timeline because now we have like a better understanding. Uh, I even got a video of the local news showing it off too. Uh, yeah. Back when we got back to the hotel, uh, we saw it on TV that uh, the local news had uh, shown off uh, some clips of Kineticon. Uh, and then uh, Saturday, we uh, that was our big cosplay day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got out in my banana suit and... I was a girl for the whole day. <laughs> right. well, what character were you? Um, Zero Two from uh, Darling in the Frank. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I've never seen that anime, but I definitely know of that character because of the Rule 34 game shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's quite the popular waifu. <laughs> yeah. So Lobo was quite the popular waifu for the day. It was pretty great. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like a surprising amount of people approached us and like asked to pick pictures with us. Yeah, I was really surprised. For yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of maybe like figured that you would get a little bit of, bit of a notice. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, you know, every time I was asking, I was like, like oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was, uh, it was our first time cosplaying. Like, yeah, ever. first time ever. Yeah. But, uh, not counting the... Not counting the VTuber cosplay that I did uh, a couple of years ago, but that was like just for a video. I didn't, I didn't go out like looking like that in public. And honestly, I don't want to go out looking like that in public. There was too much chest hair showing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it it doesn't look good. I didn't. I don't think I rocked that as uh, yeah as well as I presented in that video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and people would have had a lot of questions if I uh, if I dressed like that in public. Yeah, we attended the hentai panel. Too. Oh, the good, the bad. Yeah, the yeah. good, the bad, and the ugly oh, yeah. of right the right. hentai panel. I forgot yeah. about that. Uh, a, a brief summary: If you've seen my weird fetishes tier list video with J Man, that panel went a whole lot further than that weird fetishes video. <laughs> Because they had some batshit insane stuff in uh, that uh, essentially a hentai review panel. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, the good stuff? Okay, I see why people are into it. The bad stuff? Okay, I can see why people might not like it. Other people might like it. It's, it's kind of in the middle. Uh -huh. And then the ugly... <laughs> I mean, genuinely, it seemed like everyone had disdain for it, with maybe like one or two exceptions. Uh, but uh, just, yeah, uh, whew, some of that ugly stuff was ugly. Like, objectively, uh, very unappealing to the eyes in one way or another. And it could be anything from a very ugly looking art style or uh, a rushed, oh. unfinished product. Yeah. Uh, or uh, just, or it could just be the fetishes that are very extreme and uh, things that never even crossed my mind. And I've explored a lot of areas of the internet. Yeah. That was quite the selection. It was a lot. We did it for you, S'more. We, had, we, we attended that panel for you, S'more. You know, Saturday we just walked around the vendor. Yeah. Uh, with our costumes. Yeah, we did. We we went to the vendor hall every day. There was the furry parade. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, so Lobo got uh, some pretty good footage of the furry parade, uh, which was just a. Uh, it, they had like a gathering of furries there, mm -hmm. at the convention, and they all gathered into one room. And then they just went in like a massive line of uh, just a bunch of furry cosplayers. Everybody in fur suits, uh, just going, walking along. And there were even some non-furry cosplays in there, like the Among Us oh, yeah, cosplayer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which yeah. was like a big inflatable Among Us character. And yeah, I think Max said that. Yeah, it was very, very sus. What What are you doing in the furry in the furry <laughs> parade? Among us. That's weird. That's weird. What do you got under that helmet? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that was really cool. We also went to Subway that day. Yeah, yeah we yeah. went to Subway. Which, 
honestly, like that was a long wait. It was a long wait just to get Subway. <laughs> I feel like we would have been better off if we got more food truck food, but uh, at the same time, we had to keep up the tradition. Yeah, like that was purely the only reason why we chose Subway over the food trucks, <laughs> which makes us probably sound insane because they had a lot of uh, variety there and we could have gotten some really good stuff but alas tradition uh we also uh found someone's uh artwork like they had an autograph artwork on the floor uh yeah it was yeah. A, like a black it was black over yeah yeah so basically uh we uh we picked it up so that way no one would take it and we took it to uh, the nearest staff member that we could find yeah, yeah. and asked about uh, having a lost and found. And uh, it didn't seem like the staff member was totally re prepared for it, which is totally understandable. You have to manage a lot of stuff. Uh, and we were trying to figure out where the lost and found was at the convention. Mm -hmm. And then uh, fortunately, the owner of that autograph who dropped it yeah. uh, retreated his steps and uh, came back to us. So... We were going to attend a a, a speed run for okay. uh, Super Mario Brothers two and three. Yeah, and the person never showed up. Yeah. So uh, the the director for the panels uh, showed up and uh, told us that uh, the person never showed up, and if anyone was willing to host a panel, uh, speak now. <laughs> And uh, I, I spoke up and volunteered, and I talked about my 30-day uh, One Piece challenge on the mic in front of uh, a diminishing crowd of people. Most of them were leaving. Yeah. Uh, it was, honestly, it was, it, it was a little anxiety-inducing, uh, but understandable, too, because the people that showed up for the speed run might not be interested in One Piece or the challenge. You know, it wasn't what they came there for. So it's totally understandable that they wanted to leave. Uh, however, it didn't necessarily help those first few minutes of uh, trying to speak aloud about uh, the panel. It was it was scary, but I think it was well worth doing. Uh, it actually uh, triggered a little bit of uh, confidence in me to uh, be able to run a panel. Yeah. Uh, there were a few people that uh, really uh, complimented what I did and it was great to be able to just uh, get some of the responses from them. There were a few people that uh, had a bunch of questions about it and they were really curious about the process and also just asked a bunch of general One Piece questions uh, because they yeah. wanted to hear my perspective like, oh, what's your favorite arc? What's your favorite character? Yeah. <laughs> like the, the very common ones that you tend to get uh, among One Piece fans. Yeah, so uh, basically buy, buy Rana Bano. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> I did. And I actually got my badge reimbursed because I ran that panel, uh, which we'll talk about uh, for Sunday. But yeah, I got to run a panel. It, uh, it ended up being like around 10 people that stuck around. Yeah. Uh, so it was relatively small and there were like maybe four people that were asking questions, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, and like me kind of uh, revealing uh, my speech and like what I was talking about, it was kind of more difficult. And when it became the Q&A part, it became a whole lot easier because I could just bounce off of other people. Uh, and I tend to... I tend to have an easier time talking when I'm bouncing uh, off of somebody else. Yeah. Like, like me here with Lobo, like, like it's easier for me to talk because I've got him to work with. You don't even have to say much, but uh, just having like another presence and uh, yeah. uh, someone else to help contribute to the conversation uh, definitely makes things easier. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I found uh, a lot of like almost all of it. Yeah. Or I, actually, I found the whole thing. Yeah, I just had to split the parts because it was pretty long. <laughs> yeah, uh, the panel should be up, and if it's not up yet, it will be. Uh, it just depends on the order that we upload everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. So who knows? But uh, check the description below, and if you if, if you haven't seen it yet, just make sure you're subscribed to both channels, and uh, you should be good to go. And then after that, uh, we went to the not safer work voice acting panel.
Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they basically just talked about uh, what it's like to voice for uh, Rule Thirty Four videos, uh, and like it was, it was kind of cool to get to learn about their methods and uh, have an understanding. Of it, it, like it wasn't just about uh, your standard voice acting. Yeah. There's a lot of different emphasis and uh, uh, focusing on like uh, sound effects and uh, uh, like. Uh, mic distance and uh, doing more subtle voices obviously can't really go into detail on what happened uh, but I will say that uh, uh, the the first part with them like talking about the actual process and like what it's like to record or edit or uh, to, to work for business. people yeah. to do business yeah. with it yeah. apparently they make good money in uh, in that so I mean if you're willing to do uh, a voiceover for Rule Thirty Four, you might actually make some pretty good bank uh, if if you're if you're into voice acting and you're willing to do NSFW stuff. Like there's a there's a big market out there for you. Yeah. Because uh, not that many people are willing to do it. Uh, that said, we can't. This like at very most PG thirteen. We can't go into too much detail. Uh, that was pretty funny though it was yeah. it was yeah and uh we got to see some some things oh well, yeah some but, some uh, things but when they did the voices it was like mm-hmm. it, was really it, it was pretty funny well, the it's, volunteers, it, volunteers yeah. def- definitely interesting seeing uh people attempt it live yeah <laughs> uh that was uh, a fun time uh but eventually i i started to get bored of it and i asked lobo if we could leave early because uh I was hoping more for like, you know, more of like the explanation uh, rather than just uh, uh, volunteers coming up and it kind of dragged on and on and on. I mean, they were pretty much repeating that. Uh, yeah. Those clips and stuff. I yeah, they ran, was, they ran out of clips. Yeah, I, was, I kind of was expecting more yeah, clips. For sure. It was just Especially like with how long the panel was. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we ended up uh, dipping a little bit after and then uh, we came back here. I. And then uh, uh, Lobo was a real champ. Uh, I went to a bar at one of the one of the DJ parties, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I had uh, a few drinks. I had uh, a little bit of dancing, talked to some strangers, which is not normal for me. Uh, but uh, I got the alcohol in my system quickly after a, a very long line. Yeah, and Lobo Lobo stuck it out. Lobo watched it. Lots over me. Yeah, uh, I made a little bit too. He made sure I didn't get into too much trouble. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, I appreciate that. And you didn't drink at all, but I, I'm not a, like I'm not a, maybe I'm not a drinker. Yeah, you know, like the fact that you were willing to go. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, it, it was definitely an experience. <laughs> not really to my tasting, but you know, mm-hmm. I stuck with it. Yeah, I did get some footage. Yeah, you did get some footage. Okay. I got a little bit of footage. Yeah, I got a couple. They had like a cool like projector screen, oh, yeah, that, that, that was yeah, like that visuals yeah. and and uh, although the music was loud, uh, they did. Uh, I I really enjoyed the soundtrack selection uh, because it was a lot of fun uh, dance music and a lot of like music that I felt a lot of nostalgia over. Like we're talking like a lot of early two thousand stuff, um, and just getting to like hear some of the songs and going through everything was uh, it was great and some of it took me back like one of the songs was played at like my high school prom and uh, it was like the uh, trendiest song at the time so that was would that be like early that, 2010s yeah 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 I mean it was a mix there yeah. was like some early 2000s stuff there was some 2010 stuff there yeah. might even been have been some 90s stuff and and there was some stuff that came out in the 2020s too yeah like like it was a, a bit of a variety for sure yeah. uh, but there were some songs that just resonated with me more than others like uh the dougie that was uh <laughs> that was just such a great uh great moment and i i had to i couldn't remember how to do the dougie but i tried <laughs> oh, okay yeah. yeah so that was pretty cool and then uh today we actually, uh, uh, I didn't sleep very well. <laughs> uh, 
I like I kept waking up early in the morning regardless of uh, everything else. Uh, but uh, uh, eventually we woke up. We went. Uh, we, had we had breakfast. Yeah. Uh, breakfast at the hotel was not free, uh, but it was uh, a, a good selection, and it helped energize us each day. Yeah. Uh, it would really it was something that we needed to get by. It was uh, oh yeah, having that very big, necessary. Having a big breakfast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because once you get to the convention, it's harder to like make time for meals, and uh, yeah, like you can get uh, very hungry and you can forget to eat. And uh, uh, you know, eating ahead of time, it's not a bad idea, uh, because then uh, you'll you'll have uh, more energy to expend later. Uh, I went to the panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, I mean, after like uh, going through the vendor hall again, there was a yeah. panel where uh, we. Uh, it was a panel about panels. Oh, actually, uh, I forgot. Yesterday we also went to an Ev Evangelion oh, panel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, and uh, the voice actors for oh Black Clover. Black Clover. Yeah, we, went to yeah, we might want to talk about those a bit first. Okay. So, yeah, so backtrack back to Saturday. <laughs> For a little bit, yeah. Uh, so, do you want to talk about the? I I've never seen Black Clover, so yeah, you want to talk I, about I, that first. Yeah, I want to see uh, the Black Clover panel. Um, they had all the voice actors mm -hmm. uh, that attended over there, which was quite a uh, amount actually. Yeah, it was like well, like there were five, five of them. Five of them, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was actually uh, pretty cool to like learn how they um, um, voice the, characters. The, yeah, voice characters and like uh, what were like their favorite parts. Right. And, um, and the experience of like their day to day job. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was, it was uh, pretty cool. I, I never watched the show. So for me, I had a totally different experience than Lobo. Uh, for me, it was more so like, oh man, look at all of these interesting references that they're making that I have no idea about. I'm so curious. What the hell is this show? <laughs> like, what is it? Uh, it was so confusing to me, but it was uh, it was a good time though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, did you have anything else to say about it? Uh, I don't think so. It was just pretty much about like uh, yeah, like about the, how they um, um, oh like how they they can also relate to the characters mm -hmm. that they voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, it seemed like they all formed a bond with their character. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit. Which uh, means that you're doing your job well as a voice actor when you uh, bond and you grow a fondness for that character that you're playing. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I guess we can talk a little bit about the Evangelion panel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, um, you might want to take the lead on this one because I haven't seen Evangelion. You probably remember a bit uh, more. But well, it, yeah, actually, it was more like exploring like uh, the motherhood the, theme. Yeah, the motherhood theme. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit. I think a little bit of lore. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't remember any of the characters' names, but uh, it it talked about like a few select characters. Uh, so. Yeah, like I know, like uh, you know Shinji, Azuka, mm -hmm. um, Ray, um, and I know that they were. Yeah, you know, she was talking about the um, like pretty much about the um, the original series, and then mm -hmm. she even talked about the uh, the newer films. Um, yeah, yeah. It's actually nice to see some of the clips from the newer films too. Yeah, and uh, when I was watching it, I've never seen Evangelion, but uh, to get to watch it and like hear about this world, it was just like a great introduction to the series without really uh, being uh, told much. And even though there were plenty of spoilers, I didn't necessarily mind mm -hmm. because I wasn't I wasn't planning on watching the show anytime soon. However. Uh, now, uh, after seeing the panel, I'm a lot more interested in watching the show. So that might be. Uh, yeah, it's only like. That might have jumped the list a little bit of yeah, shows I want to watch. The, the original series is like 25 episodes. Mm -hmm. At least what compared to with Black Clover, it's like 170. Right. And I'm very big on like dystopian worlds. So, like, uh, the different themes surrounding it and how uh, it was like the end of humanity mm -hmm. uh, and how. Uh, uh, how, how like the complications of like getting a child to be born uh, seemed to have uh, there there was very little that um, 
like there there was a lot explained but there were it felt like it was providing more questions than answers a lot of the time yeah. uh, but that that makes it interesting uh and i have like a fondness for uh some of that like early 2000s 90s well, anime it was 90s yeah yeah 90s and early 2000s yeah. anime that uh uh that was around during my childhood that i never watched yeah the original series came out in uh, 95 and the uh yeah. film started in 2007. right like i felt a similar way about watching the old school one piece episodes like yeah. you know seasons one through three uh and seeing them at the time uh like like it was sort of just like something that went on in the background and i never really paid much attention to it and then actually like getting into it and getting to experience it was awesome. Yeah, uh, so we attended the panel about panels okay. yeah. uh, and that was pretty cool, especially after doing my impromptu panel. Uh, it like I had a totally different perspective on it uh, and, you know, actually getting to talk and uh, sit in front of a microphone in front of uh, many observers. It, it felt a lot like a public speaking class that I took in college. Like, oh, okay. it, it's very awkward. It doesn't feel natural at all. Uh, but uh, once, like, your brain is able to shut that anxiety off and actually focus on the topic, then it becomes a lot more natural. Uh, and it, it turns into more like a regular conversation. Yeah, but There were uh, a lot of good explanations and a lot of cool tips and tricks on how to prepare for panels. In particular, I was very fond of the idea of having uh, three points of uh, failure. So basically it was like, okay, if you have a panel and you got like a presentation ready, uh, make sure that you bring your laptop with, with it on it, uh, have a friend bring their laptop and uh, bring a thumb drive with you, yeah. uh, just in case like you lose your laptop or uh, just have your just have like your script or your uh, or like your slides printed out, and then you can look at it and you can kind of give the the same uh, presentation just without uh, the projection screen. Yeah. Uh, so there was a lot of good talk about preparation and a lot of good talk about how panels operate, and so that was uh, pretty cool to see. And in the future for a con, I might actually apply to. Provide a panel myself, which would be pretty wild. Uh, but uh, given the whole One Piece experience, I might want to do like an actual official one about that uh, 30 day no, One yeah. Piece challenge and just uh, watching it uh, over a thousand episodes in 30 days. It was wild. Yeah. Uh, and then other than that, uh, we got, uh, got some good banana footage. I, I did wear oh. my banana costume again on Sunday. Uh, because I just love the attention. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, even though we like we were planning on just going as ourselves on Sunday, I changed my mind and I decided, you know what? Um, yeah. Let me wear it. And it was a lot easier for you to put it on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The banana costume way easier than what Lobo had yeah, to go through. Zero two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine did not take nearly as much effort. In fact, I felt like I was wearing a very cheap party store costume, which it pretty much was. Like I bought it off Amazon and it was, it was cheap. It was like a silly, quick Halloween costume that anyone yeah. could get. Uh, but I think, yeah, what makes it more like pretty kind of unique is that it's like the only like, I mean, compared to like where you see it's just you know, anime characters or video game characters. Right. I was, I was an old meme from 2006. Yeah. So, yeah. so I stood out a little bit, and yeah. uh, because over there you you would ex expect you know like you know yeah. the furries, you know the anime, you know VTubers, right? Video games, yeah, and a lot of TV people shows, were movies. particularly like fascinated and excited about uh, seeing it. I'm not even sure I can count it as cosplay, but uh, if you broaden the definition enough, I guess it falls under the cosplay realm. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I did dress up as a character technically, so. Uh, there, that is that for sure. Uh, but yeah, like I pretty much got the same uh, result that I did on uh, Saturday, and uh, you know, people that met up with me before they got to say hi again, yeah. and more people recognize me as the Banana Band. People don't really know who I am <laughs> uh, outside yeah. of that. So uh, yeah, uh, it 
wearing a cosplay just makes you a lot more approachable and oh um, yeah definitely yeah and if you're an attention whore like myself then uh i i recommend it because people will come up to you and they'll say hey i really like your cosplay or i like that character or you're my waifu <laughs> <laughs> i think i had that once i think mm -hmm. <laughs> I once had that feeling during BronyCon 2015 when people would recognize me uh, from my YouTube videos and that doesn't really happen at general conventions. So uh, to get uh, that kind of similar vibes and similar energy from people, but just knowing me for a, a completely different person was, uh, it was wild to say the least. Uh, the banana man is now famous in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's crazy, yeah. And yeah, we took some video shots of Banana Man. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hoping to do uh, like a, a little bit of a, like kind of a sketch music video type of thing. Uh, I'll be working on that. And I imagine that this video uh, is like that a banana sketch video is probably going to take some time to come out. So I appreciate you being subscribed. You're definitely subscribed, right? You. You should be if you want to see that amazing banana video, which I don't know how long it's going to take to make, but I'm looking forward to the process. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out how to handle all the editing later, but we got some good video shots of it for sure. Yeah, yeah. I even posted a teaser of it on Twitter. <laughs> the the yeah. clip with me uh, dancing with the furry. And oh, uh, uh, he, he gave some good advice. Uh, he uh, he directed us to like take a second shot so that way the lighting wouldn't uh, uh, get in the way as much uh, and uh, you had a better view of everything. But then also like uh, he recommended that we uh, do the shake in rhythm. So we did the same move in rhythm at the same time and it looked really cool. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like the gifts of like the caramel dancing dance where they would like all do it at the same time and they were all perfectly in sync. Oh. It reminded me of that. Like yeah. it gave that kind of energy. Uh, a banana and a, and a furry uh, <laughs> dancing together, uh, but just a different move. So instead of the caramel dancing, it was a, a maraca shake. Yeah. It was great. Uh, so uh, I hope you look forward to seeing that in the future. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about regarding the convention? Uh, no, I mean, like, like I said, it was definitely a, a big experience. I mean, like mm -hmm. I said, for, especially for cosplaying for the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I, should, I would consider doing it again next year, um, you know, depending. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, what about you? Like, what do you consider? Like, oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know who all cosplay has. Oh, we won? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll think of something, probably, hopefully. Yeah. But uh, after the high that I got from all the attention, I mean, it, it's a lot more motivating to actually wear a cosplay to the next convention. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be also in a bigger group. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Uh, because uh, 2022, even though this was our first, cos uh, our first con uh, since COVID, it's it's a different feel when it's just the two of us, you know, uh, like we enjoyed it. We had a great time together and like it was great having you here, Lobo, because I, I felt like just having somebody to be with at the con at all times yeah. really made the experience better. Yeah. But it definitely doesn't match the experience of being with a group of people, you know, like four, five, six eight yeah. people uh, like th th something about that is magical and uh while this was still wonderful and it was definitely something that we needed yeah uh, after yeah. our long years of not being to a con yeah you know just uh, personal not personal stuff but you know like jobs and all that. yeah for sure i mean the, the past few years have been very stressful on a lot of people and so this was a great chance to de-stress to get extra motivation, uh, to kind of boost signals in our creative brains for a little bit, and just to uh, let loose and enjoy ourselves. That was something that I really haven't felt in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a 
just a wonderful experience. And we hope that next year we'll attend another convention and it will be even better. Yeah. We don't know which one it will be. We That has yet to be decided. Um, but uh, I would not be opposed to coming back to Kineticon. I had a great time. Did you have a good time? Uh, yeah, a good time, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Kineticon, wonderful convention. A uh, lot of great people. Overall, I thought it was ran pretty well. I think it was pretty solid. There weren't that many malfunctions that happened. It was uh, a great time. And, and the city of Hartford, Connecticut is also very beautiful. Yeah. Like, uh, exploring it and seeing all that it had available. Yeah, it was uh, a, a very enjoyable experience and actually kind of surprising like how nice it was. Uh, and we got great weather too. During the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good weather. Yeah. yeah. Except for the time that I got rained on on Thursday. Thursday before Lobo was here. Yeah. The weather was like perfectly sunny and then it just poured intense rain. And like before I could even get into my Uber, I had to like run through the rain and I got drenched, soaked. It was horrible. <laughs> but it's all good now. Uh, I just, I, I even hung up my shirt and pants and socks to dry, yeah. <laughs> which they're dry now, for sure. All right, well, um, just a little bit for cosplay, mm -hmm. I guess, like for next year, um, I guess, um, like I'll, I'll probably wear like for like all three days, right. especially if we're in a big group. Um, I would like to do like uh, wear the same one that I wore this year, mm -hmm. um, zero two. Uh, for Saturday, I like to go as uh, Call Me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm thinking for Sunday, I would like to try uh, Makima from wow. uh, Chainsaw Man. Three cosplays at one convention. I might try it, yeah, because I, I noticed that uh, when we went for this one, mm -hmm. um, yeah, obviously what I did it for Saturday, but then I noticed for Sunday, I was like, I, I kept thinking, like, maybe I should try one cosplay. Mm -hmm. Actually, originally it was going to be like for Friday and Saturday. Yeah. But then I'm thinking maybe I should try for, uh, for a Sunday, even though it's like last day, but it's like, you know, because of yeah. you, went to, when you went with your banana costume. Because uh, I was think I was thinking like maybe you know like Sunday might be like um, to be like a just you know just in our regular clothes and stuff. But then since you know it's not as often that you know we go to conventions or I, or I go to conventions, especially with the friends, um, I might consider like especially where we're gonna be in a big group. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, I would definitely consider like you know doing three. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, wow. that's really cool. I'll I'll stick with the one cosplay in the meantime, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. But yeah, uh, anything else or is that it? No, I think that's it. All right, cool. Uh, we, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry, so I think it might be time to get some dinner. Yeah, it's time to get some yeah. tea. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole uh, trip isn't over yet, even though the convention is, and uh, hopefully we'll get to enjoy our last few moments in Connecticut. I'm sure we will. Yeah. All right. So take care. Peace out. Watch some of the other videos, subscribe to our channels, and I'll, I'll see you all later. Have a good one. Yeah, have a good one. Bye. -bye.